Hello everyone! It's not a Monday, but if you're watching the day that this video comes out, then happy Halloween! I just want to do a really casual video. I changed the spot where I'm filming because I thought it looked spookier in this corner. And we're going to be talking about all the manga I read in October that fit the bill for what I would consider like October themed reads. So I'm not going to be talking about every single volume I read, just the ones that I would recommend for future Octobers or for anyone who's not ready to say goodbye to October and they want some more spooky Halloween-y recommendations. I was originally going to get myself some tea to, you know, relax and have a drink with you all, but I am actually very warm. <laughs> I know, take the sweatshirt off, but I love the sweatshirt. Look at this sweatshirt. It's so cute. <laughs> In honor of Halloween. And uh, so I am just drinking water, but I encourage you all to have a beverage right along with me, whether that is tea or just water, stay hydrated. And yeah, let's get into everything I read in October. The good, the bad, and the ugly, what I recommend, what I wouldn't, you know, <laughs> all that good stuff. And a lot of these I did read for an Instagram challenge, Manga Freakathon, which was hosted this year by Bizarre Individual, who has an Instagram. And he also has a YouTube, so go give him a follow, along with Marge Reads Manga, who has an Instagram as well as a YouTube. And last but not least is Tony Reads the Manga, which I follow them on Instagram. I don't know if they have a YouTube channel though. So, but yeah, go follow them. And I really enjoy their Manga Freakathon challenge, always encouraging me to read more spooky reads this time of year. Sadly, I don't feel like I read every manga on my spooky TBR from the challenge, but you know, it is what it is. I also read a bunch that I didn't dig out to post for my challenge. So I read those instead of the ones I read. So I mean, Target kind of acquired, question mark. <laughs> also shout out to my own Instagram before we get started. Don't forget to follow me there. And a little heads up, I will be doing my own challenge on Instagram and on here for the month of December. So I hope you all will look forward to more details to come in November and will hopefully join me. I can't wait, I'm so excited for it. But yeah, let's get on with what I read. So I wanna start with the good, the ones I recommend. And honestly, one of my first October reads that like, I think cause it came luckily like very, very early in October was Gannibal volume two. I know, I know, I'm not gonna go on and on about it because if you have watched any of my videos on this channel, you know how much I like this one. I will just say, if you like creepy, spine tingling, you know, horror, I just really recommend this one. And volume two did not disappoint. I am still super loving this series. It's definitely dark though, so be warned. If you couldn't, I mean, tell by this lovely cover. <laughs> and next up, one I didn't pull out for the spooky TBR, but one I super duper duper love and always love saving some volumes to read around this time of year is ZOM 100. So this month I read volumes 12 to volume 15, which is the most recent release of this series. I seriously recommend ZOM 100 Bucket List of the Dead. It is so good. It is just full of funny, charming characters, but the series kind of upped the ante, got a little serious, got a little emotional with it, and it's still very comedy heavy, and it's still a lot of fun, but there are some more like, oh no, is something gonna happen to these guys? Moments in there. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'd say 12, 13, 14 were a huge hit for me. Volume 15 took a slight downward um, dive. I think it was just because they were shifting between like, the what was of the series and the what is going to come next, you know, like kind of like finishing up one arc 
so to speak, of the series while transitioning into another. Next up are two one shots I read. One was a reread, Ibitsu, and the other was new. I got it last Christmas, and so I saved it for the spooky season, and it was such a perfect read, and that was The Walking Cat. So I actually talk about both of these titles in this video, talking about one-shot horror reads that you should check out. So yeah, I won't go back into them. If you want to hear my thoughts, go check that video out if you haven't already. But uh, yeah, they're really good. I recommend them both. Then we have the complete series that I did read and did really, really enjoy. And that was Phantom Tales of the Night. I read volumes 1 through volumes 12, and that is the complete series. I really enjoyed my time with this one. It is darker and more of a, I don't want it, like a sinister supernatural vibe. It's not all like, you know, fluffy rainbows and stuff, but it's also not like too creepy. I don't know. The imagery can be creepy, but the subject matter to me at least it didn't seem like so scary and yeah I just I really like the premise it gives me um vibes of uh, Pet Shop of Horrors which I will touch on <laughs> actually in a minute but I really like the premise of this owner being a very supernatural being takes any form they wish being the kind of I wouldn't say protagonist, but the the knot that all these loose threads are tied together with, and uh, they they sit in the epicenter of this story, and I really liked it. It this owner just appears to people, other spirits, uh, yokai, what have you, all sorts, and lets them stay in his inn, but he wants in exchange their secrets, and I will say by the end I didn't feel a hundred percent satisfied I really don't know if it's just me because I I didn't really get something a little piece of the puzzle I guess I don't want to give any spoilers away but it didn't leave me like disappointed it just left me kind of feeling like I'm gonna have to reread this one and see if the pieces bit more into place if I miss something while reading along because there are a decent amount of characters that are introduced throughout and since the owner is not human and has lived a very long life and interacts with others that also have long lives it spans many many years and sometimes it will jump back and forth through you know past and present so yeah it's just it it was a lot but I also just found it very very intriguing dark and interesting in the art. The art really, really was standout to me. I loved it. And I just, yeah, I would recommend if you want a supernatural read, a little on the dark side, a little, like makes you think, a little more intellectual, yeah, a little deep and thought provoking at times. And and uh, overall, just, just a really captivating time, I'd say. So yeah, that was one of only two series I managed to complete this month and uh, I would really recommend that one. Not so much on the other one, but we'll get there when we get there. And then we'll move into the romance genre that I would really recommend. First, we have Fangs. So I started reading Fangs finally. I would had the first two volumes for forever, but I finally started reading Fangs uh, in June when I did my vampire LGBTQ reads for Pride Month and I you know, dash a, a little dash of spooky in there. So yeah, I read volume one then, and now I read volume two, and the newest volume that was released this month, volume three, and they were both really good. I am glad actually though, that I didn't read volume two when I read volume one, because it ends on kind of a cliffhanger, even though not much comes from the cliffhanger, it's just nice to be able to dive right into the third volume and know more like what's going on and stuff. But uh, yeah, like, yeah, it's just like such a mm, nice BL, very steamy, very, mm, yeah. If you like vampires and you like some spice in your BL, definitely recommend Fangs. <laughs> it is still ongoing and who knows when we'll get the fourth volume, but it's still 
it's still a series I would recommend. One of my most recent pickups is Otaku Vampires Love Bite Volume 1 that came out this month. I finally picked it up and it was just all the fluffy adorable vampire-ness that I could ever ask for in a story, honestly. <laughs> like I loved it so much. It's so cute. I like the little bits of actual like vampire stuff that crops up, but it's definitely just more cutesy and fluffy about this girl moving to Tokyo because she loves this one anime, especially a certain character from this anime that she's just obsessed with. And so she moved to Tokyo to experience the culture. <laughs> I mean, I understand completely. And uh, the art's so nice, like, I mean, seriously. But yeah, I definitely recommend if you like shoujo beat titles, if you like romance and fantasy. So yeah, that was a good new release that came out. And last is kind of an honorable mention because I, I don't really feel like it's necessarily Halloween-y, but it's fantasy, it's got fairy tale vibes. So I feel like it fits enough, but I'm not gonna talk too much about it. I'm gonna actually probably talk more in length about it in a future video I wanna do, but that is The Lonely Castle in the Mirror. I am so in love, so obsessed with this series. It is technically ongoing, but the next volume, volume five, will be the final volume and it's supposed to come out i think next year very early like january or february i believe so it will be done soon but yeah i read volume four that came out this month and oh, it was just another great installment it's just so good like the, the characters are really interesting and learning more about them and this fantasy world like it definitely amped up the intensity in this last volume so oh, i just i love it that's all. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, just go read it. I love it. <laughs> now we move into the wah wah. It was okay. It was okay. I I like what I read. I didn't love it, but I liked it. And we'll start off with the two first volumes I read for series that I kind of wanted to read this month, but didn't have as voracious of a reading appetite. I didn't read quite as much as sometimes I do. And uh, it always depends, but I was hopeful that I would read the whole of Rosario Vampire. I I do remember the anime really well, and this first volume felt very familiar to me from having watched the anime. It's this young boy who doesn't get into any schools, and then all of a sudden his parents find a flyer to this weird school, and he gets accepted, and oh boy, it's a whole school full of monsters, but uh-oh, he's a human, and uh, they don't like humans. And so he's thinking he should resign, he should get out of this school, but there's this cutie girl, a cutie little vampire girl, and so he stays. Um, it's very, rom like, it's more etchy romance vibes of the early 2000s, but I've always heard that the first part of Rosario Vampire, like the first 10 volumes are more like that and is what the anime is based on, and that the second, half Rosario and Vampire season two that that gets like a more serious vibes in the story or something so I do really want to read it I didn't dislike volume one I just like it wasn't grabbing me I guess I just didn't feel like that kind of series or story at the at this particular time you know it is what it is and so I am obviously going to try to read it at some point I just I didn't finish it Next up, I did read the first volume of Pet Shop of Horrors. I was contemplating reading all of Pet Shop of Horrors and then realized I picked Phantom Tales in the Night and Pet Shop of Horrors, which are both very similar vibes and I don't really want to read both of these. And then I realized while well, the first like reprinted volume is coming out in February. So maybe I'll do a kind of video comparing the new printing and the old and if the series might be up your alley and if you'll want to collect it. So yeah, I think that's my plan right now. Um, let me know if you'd want me to do that if you are interested in Pet Shop, of course, and want to hear more about it and whether I like it and would recommend it once I read the whole thing. Um, I do like what volume one does. I really like Count D, seems like a normal human, but who knows? <laughs> and he runs this shop in Chinatown that sells exotic animals, or does he? 
does he actually have a lot more weird and, and uh, mysteriously wonderful creatures than just exotic animals. And if the people follow the contract to a T, it'll all be good. However, these, these people be dumb and they don't ever follow the contract to a T. So there's always some shenanigans and things falling apart and things that happen are, are supernatural and interesting. And yeah, I mean, I have read the first volume before and rereading it, I still really enjoyed it. It's just like, like I said, it was too similar to Phantom Tales of Night and I wasn't feeling it. Next up we have Undead. This is a complete two volume BL series about two boys, childhood friends actually, who are just trying to live their life in a zombie apocalypse. I, first of all, felt two volumes wasn't a good enough length for this if they really wanted me to care about the guys individually and care about their relationship. The relationship felt very forced in the first volume, like, oh, hey, guess what? I've had feelings for you all along. Oh my God, I just need to blurt it out for whatever reason, right now, right here. I can't hand hold it in any longer because, oh, the book started, so I have to tell you my feelings. Like, it just felt very, like, rushed in a manufactured kind of way. And then the plot was also kind of just, it all felt like it wanted to tell an interesting story, but it wasn't given enough time. And so it just didn't feel satisfying. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it unless you really love BL. Aaron and or you really love zombies. I had a fine time with it. Like, I don't think it was bad. I, I ended up warming up to the characters, but it just was an okay read to me at the end of the day. And the last in my like, okay category was Your Turn to Die, volume one. I got this used in my last haul, actually, if you watched that video I dropped on Saturday, just a manga shopping with me um, type vlog. And I share what volumes I picked up and this was one of them. I, I mostly got it because it was in the used sale section, so it was half off. I didn't dislike it. There was a part that was weird to me in the beginning that kind of bugged me um, where he like gets out of a trap, but like how you didn't, Am I stupid or did you not like make it abundantly clear how he got her out of this trap? I don't know. To me, I I, I didn't love it, um, but I was intrigued. I was down to get the next volume. I went on Amazon after I bought it, which usually I go check it out beforehand. So stupid of me. Found out it was complete at five volumes, which at first I was like, oh, that's not a nice short size for a survival game type of series. Uh, only to then see how poorly it was rated and people felt like it was completely unsatisfying and doesn't like explain anything. And I was just like, what have I done? Why did I start a series that I probably am just going to be annoyed about? <laughs> like, that's what it feels like. So I didn't dislike it, but I'm hesitant on whether I'm gonna keep going and collect all the volumes or not. And because I have this feeling, it's just gonna be like a lot of the horror series where I just feel very unsatisfied and annoyed by the end of it. But yeah, I mean, if you're looking for one and you didn't see this one and you really love survival game stories. Maybe I want to give it a try. Then we have the I don't really recommend these ones category. Um, they're really like they're hard for me to recommend. I didn't necessarily hate them but they're very off-putting but yeah for for Japan a lot of it is um is the is the incest which is what we find in Ghost Diary that's just well, I mean okay they don't go like all the way with it. But my God, both the brother and the sister seem to really like each other. And the girl, the sister, the older sister, even pretty much comes out and says it in the third and final volume. So Ghost Diary is completed three volumes. I had been meaning to read it for a long time. It was sitting on my shelf in um, Bizarre, <laughs> Bizarre Individual said it was horrible and awful. And, um, yeah, so I wasn't really excited to read it, but I was like, you know what, this, this is the month, I'm gonna do it. So I started off the month reading it so I would just get it out of the way. And I don't think it's awful. Like it's written interestingly enough, these kids 
uh, form an occult club and they all are interested in the supernatural or you know join for one reason or another <laughs> and then this kid's sister ends up disappearing so the occult club kind of try and follow up on leads and find out where his older sister went and then they run into a like shikigami who i like her character design but i don't like her at all and hey there might be a good reason why i don't like her at all this is a spoiler free review but i will say it's not great it's not great um and then there is some questionable non-consensual kind of trying to force himself on the shikigami um another character not the little brother but another character who has a crush on her she's not really a human but like it's still shitty behavior you should have consent from undead creatures too i guess <laughs> and then the end choice the protagonist the guy the little brother guy protagonist makes pissed me the fuck off it pissed me the fuck off. I can't deny it. It pissed me the fuck off. Also, just, I don't know. It felt like very, like, the more I ruminated on it, the less I liked it. And definitely will be unhauling Ghost Diary. But I have to say, like, it was an easy read. I, you know, read through it really quickly. I liked the little bits with the occult club. And, like, there were so many funny, like, interesting, zany, weird stories of just, like, that group of kids. It's like, why do we have to add the sister? Why? Just don't add her. Don't add the one kid in the club being a fucking creeper. And we're good, we're golden. Like it would have been a cute little story of just these kids solving mystery. I mean, I wouldn't say cute because like the, they were creepy at times and, and they encountered some dangerous monsters and spirits and shit. But like, you know what I'm saying, would have been a better series. The choices they made, not great. And then we come to our last and final read. I actually just finished this one today. And that is Homunculus Volumes 3 and 4, which make up the second omnibus. And this one is complete at five omnibuses. And I, <laughs> again, Bizarre warned me, said that he hated this one, um, gave it like zero stars or one star or something. Like he was mad at it. And I get why. Again, we have some very weird ass non-consent. Like it's so weird to me the way it's done because he's doing it for her. He's doing it to help her, to cure her or whatever he deludedly thinks. Like that's how it's like, framed as and that that part of it really rubbed me the fucking wrong way it's also the grossest read oh there's just this one really gross moment um that i i i can't get over how disgusting it was with the fluids and the blah, 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 blah. i can't i can't talk about it. it's gross um i already have talked about homunculus volume one in last october's um uh, first volumes you should read type video so go check it out if you want to hear like what the premise of this series is because I'm not really getting into it uh, but yeah it was um it was a direction it was a choice <laughs> however I think I'll continue the series because unlike in the real world I always have to preface this by saying unlike in the real world when you write that stuff into your work, I hope that there is a logical reason that you did, that there is a literary narrative that you want to express and that that helps push the story into that direction. You know what I mean? Like in real life, uh, it's just shitty people being shitty and using their their control and their power against other people when they non-consensually r word other people you know, you know what i'm saying right <laughs> i hope so it in an i'm trying to give it a benefit of the doubt that it actually has a narrative purpose and there is a reason for its inclusion other than to just paint this guy as a very scummy guy <laughs> like 
please let there be more to it. And essentially, I feel like this whole story is like asking the question of like, what does it mean to be human? And things like that nature, you know, trying to be deep and philosophical with it. My problem is if it will actually be well done in the end, if it actually isn't just being gratuitous and showing just the disgustingness of human, like I already know we be disgusting. Like you do not need to reinforce that. <laughs> I got it. We got it. Most of us know. Um, but like, I hope it's like trying, like it's actually going to go like more with it, you know, have something to say about it because like, I do like those philosophical moments and the moments when he's talking to the homeless people and their perspectives on things. And I don't know, it's just, it was, it was interesting and it's different, but when you make such big choices, like <sighs> what happens in this volume? It, it's it's got to have a narrative reason as to why I, I, I if it's just he's a shitty shit shit bag then I didn't need that that wasn't necessary for me to know I mean we've we've seen through like flashbacks of his past and just like other small shittier behaviors that he's not the best he's not a morally great person I already knew that like what the fuck I don't know so I'm very torn like like this is why I wouldn't recommend homunculus I did in that video, I rave about it. Not gonna lie. I mean, you can be wrong. You can change your mind. Um, I I want to hold my entire judgment for when it is complete because I do want to complete it because I think there's enough interest for me in the concept and the series and the direction I think it wants to go in. Will it be satisfying altogether in the long run? I don't know, and I'll hold my judgment until then but I definitely would at least hesitate majorly before recommending this to people because of its graphic and unnecessary and disgusting nature of this volume. Like this volume to me so far it feels unnecessary. Um, what happens and with this teenage girl? Like come on. <sighs> but like I said if there is a larger narrative reason, if I feel like it's, I don't want to say justified because like it, it feels icky to say, but like for the story itself was necessary to this story, it was integral to the story. Stories can have dark, uh, you know, elements to them like DV and, and different things. Um, you know, if this is integral to the story that this mangaka wants to tell, I'm going to let him tell it. And then I'm going to see how I feel about it as a whole and whether I want to unhaul it. <sighs> <laughs> that being said, yeah, I don't recommend it anymore. I changed my mind. Uh, it, if you do want to check it out, just, you know, be warned about that. Um, there are good things. There are good aspects to this one. Obviously, I really, really enjoyed volume one, but things can change when the series continues on. So yeah, that's unfortunate, but uh, that's, that's where we're going to end it. That was just a wrap up of all the October theme, October vibe type books that I read this month. And I hope you all had a happy Halloween and that you enjoyed this video. And if you want me to do more like wrap ups of what I'm reading um, in, the, in the month or something, then let me know below. Let me know what you read this month, of course, and what you would recommend that I or others should read because I would love a good recommendation. And let me know if you read <laughs> Ghost Diary or Homunculus and what you thought of it because, yeah. <laughs> so I will see you next Monday in November, a new month for my October manga haul video. Hope you join me. Until then, bye!